What's up everyone, welcome to Among the Fence, my YouTube channel where I do music reviews. My name is Aaron, and if it's your first time seeing one of my videos, I'd like to welcome my channel where we just chill and talk about all the things that we love or hate without fear of judgment. And if there's anything you want me to check out, new old album, EP, single, whatever, leave a comment below letting me know what it is and I'll make it happen for you. And if you do that, you don't want to miss out on your request or review, or you just happen to like what you see here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon. Doing all that just helps me out tremendously. I'm getting really close to that thousand subscriber mark. And once I reach that goal, I'm gonna make a video going very in depth on how I do my music reviews, how I write them up, how I film them, all of that. I'm gonna go as deep as I possibly can into this thing. But for today's video, we're gonna be checking out the new album, Curse of Existence by the band Miss May I. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this band, which I don't think there's gonna be too many, they are a metalcore band from Ohio. They started around 2007, and Curse of Existence is their seventh studio album. I admit, I haven't really been that big of a fan of this band since Monument, which was their second studio album from 2010. I am, however, still familiar with their later work, but as they tended to go a little bit more radio-friendly, I started to lose my interest. The last album that they did, Shadows Inside, definitely had potential, but the more I listened to it, the more it just started to sound like generic radio, high octane metalcore to me. And I still try to have hope for every single band. And I feel like Miss May I could easily write more original sounding music if they wanted to. The album opens up with a song, A Smile That Does Not Exist. It starts things off with a yell, a really good sounding riff and drum passage. However, I'm not really feeling the higher register distorted vocals, but it does fit the music and it sounds good, especially in that pre-chorus, which is fantastic. The chorus sounds good with cleans and really powerful drums. However, it does still kind of sound generic, even though it does have a good flow to it. The bridge is just a buildup going into the breakdown, which sounded really good. Then we have the song Earthshaker with vocals and a riff. It just sounds so huge. It's got a lot of presence to it. There's lots of energy coming from the barrage of drums. The chorus kind of keeps that pace going a little bit without changing too much other than like the clean vocals. It does slow down a little bit, become a little bit more open, but it doesn't like switch things up completely. This song definitely has really strong uh, circle pit vibes to it. I feel like this is going to be a fan favorite for a live audience. And I really like that even though this song is pretty unrelenting it doesn't have too many changes in it it doesn't feel repetitive like the more i listen to this song the more i enjoy it and i don't really get too tired of it bleed together has a really aggressive intro with again another solid riff in the verse the chorus has a decent hook to it but it's nothing really compared to the post chorus which sounds fantastic the breakdown is heavy but the lyrics throughout the song are just okay they come off kind of cheesy not overly personal so it's got like this typical I'm moving on and overcoming my demons kind of feel to it. Something that everybody could relate to. So it's not like very specific. It's just generic sounding. Then we have the song Into Oblivion, which is another good sounding riff in the intro. But then the verses just become like guitar trugs and drums. Nothing special. The chorus is pretty catchy. But again, the lyrics, are, they just have that, that basic... I'm seeking something more meaningful in life, but I just can't really find it. You know, basically something that everybody in life is going through. It's not personal. It's just generic, something everybody can relate to. So it kind of tries to reach as many fans as possible. The chorus at the end, though, is absolutely amazing. It sounds so good. However, the solo right after it, it fit the song, but I'm not a huge fan of metalcore solos, so it was just kind of meh. Hollow Vessel seems to be about the struggle that we all have with that inner voice that kind of beats us up and typically tends to come to us at nighttime. I was really hoping that the distorted vocals would power their way through the chorus, but there was a mixture of cleans and distorted. It sounded pretty good. I really enjoyed the overall heaviness of the song. That's what gave the song life to me. The lyrics are pretty well written and the breakdown was solid as well. Then we have the song Free Fall, which kind of mixes things up just a little bit. When you think you're going to get a chorus, it just gives you a refrain and goes right back into verse two, which was kind of nice. The lyrics in the chorus are definitely a step up. And I feel like the fact that they let the music breathe a little bit after the chorus, they didn't jump right into verse three. They didn't come right at you with more vocals. They really let you hear the music and really feel it. That meant a lot to me, especially since like the music isn't bad in this, even though it's a little bit more generic than other metalcore bands that you wouldn't hear on the radio. 
the music is still good. Like the riffs are fantastic. They got good qualities to them. And I just like to hear that a little bit more. Born Destroyer is easily my favorite song on this album. Honestly, at this point, and basically every single time I listen to this album, specifically in the time when I was reviewing it, uh, all these songs started to sound kind of the same. Like the lead melodies and the intro are all kind of blurred and the same. The vocal tone, the music was kind of rinse and repeat. The song structures, everything. It was all very much the same. However, this song helped me out a lot. The pre-chorus was a nice change of pace. It slows down and bringing back that main melody from the intro and even the chorus stood out to me a lot. Just by changing the vocal performance and the delivery and the overall feel of the music, they weren't they, they kind of like pulled themselves out of the rut of playing the same thing over and over again that I feel like they were in the first half of this album. Even the bass gets a little bit of spotlight in the bridge, which sounds fantastic. Then we have the song Unconquered. And this is another song that kind of changes things up a little bit, but not really enough to stand out to me that much. I got to dock points from it because I, I swear the hook and the chorus was stolen right from the song Wonderwall, which I... As soon as I heard it, I, it just made me giggle. I don't know. I couldn't really take it too seriously after that. The breakdown was really good. I just feel like it would have been better. This is something that they do in a lot of their songs. If they didn't have vocals during the breakdown, I feel like it'd be better if they just let, again, just let it breathe a little. Let it chug its way out. Let us feel that music. You don't need to sing through it to get us to feel the emotion you want us to feel. Your music is doing that enough. And I feel like they, they kind of ruin it sometimes for me in that sense. Unfortunately, the song Save Your Self falls victim to the same thing of sounding like every other song on this album. It's got a cool guitar melody in the intro that it should have lasted longer. It should have kept going to the verse in some sense, but instead it just cuts out completely and we get a verse with more guitar stuff and drums. It just all sounds exactly like all the other songs. The breakdown in verse two, however, was it was it was really good it caught me off guard it sounded great but it wasn't really enough to make the whole song for me but it's definitely a standout moment in the song then we have the closing track bloodshed which has a really nice synth in the background throughout this song it's a nice touch and the riff and the verse is good but it's kind of again it sounds kind of like all the other more dynamic sounding riffs that i've heard so far but finally Finally, they do something different in the chorus where it's just all distorted or not really completely distorted, but just unclean vocals. They have a grit to them and they just it just sounds so much better. Just having that little bit of difference is enough. And then the bassy and synth outro was absolutely fantastic. This is a great closing track. I wish they would have done more stuff like this throughout the rest of the album. It, it, just the variety in it, especially that chorus. It's just it was enough. It was what I needed to really make or break this closing track. I found myself enjoying this album a lot more than I thought I was going to. All the songs on it were pretty good. I've always had a hard time with Levi's distorted vocals, but they sounded pretty good on this album. And I think the music helped out a lot by having more mids and more lows to kind of counteract his higher snarly kind of register. And the more dynamic riffs on this album were really good too. And they stood out to me a lot. They really let them shine too. Like they didn't hide them in the mix. If there was a moment where there was no vocals, you really got to hear that riff and it sounded so good. And the drums and the bass were absolutely insane throughout this whole album as well. In fact, I'd probably say out of all the instruments, the drums were the ones that probably had more of their moment and stood out to me more than anything else. I mean, they were just constantly there and they were just so good the whole time. However, I did have some issues with this album. I mean, really... Basically everything sounds exactly the same other than the songs Born Destroyer and Bloodshed. The vocal and musical tone never really changes. The verses and choruses are all kind of just chuggy guitar and then clean vocals. It's like I said before, just rinse and repeat. Once you've heard the first three songs on this album, you could basically guess how the rest of it's going to go. And there's no like surprises, nothing really catches you off guard. The lyrics also made the songs pretty generic. Like even if the music didn't, if it was good and sounded pretty original, which made a lot of really good moments not really as great for me. Like they might have made some breakdowns less enjoyable where instead I'd rather just hear the music and let the breakdown just come in heavy. They threw on like some kind of cheesy lyric and quoted it a couple times throughout, which uh, it didn't make it bad, but it made it 
not nearly as good as it had potential to be for sure and same for the choruses and the verses there's only a few songs in here that i really found it to where the lyrics were were really good and they were able to connect a little bit more personally more with me instead of just trying to reach as big of an audience as possible but again that's kind of where miss may i operates anyways and that more radio friendly kind of stuff more generic metalcore that reaches a bigger audience so with all that said i gotta give curse of existence by miss may i a 6.3 out of 10 but i want to know what you guys think like i said i haven't really been a fan of this band for a long time so yeah leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of curse of existence let me know what your favorite song is and what you would rate it and if you have anything you want me to do a review on like i said new old whatever ep single leave a comment below letting me know what it is and I'll make it happen for you. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to help support me and my channel, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon. Doing any of that stuff helps me out tremendously. Appreciate it more than you could ever imagine. Even if you don't interact with my channel whatsoever, but you watch my video, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to me talk. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or night, whenever you happen to be watching this. And I will talk to you guys next time. I was